So my whole day went like this. I would show up, someone would smile and introduce me as my grandparents' grands, identify me as my grandparents' grandson, and Becky or Susan or grandma herself would <laughs> correct them and say I was the granddaughter, and they would say, oh, wonderful, nice to meet you. And frankly, it was a little freaky. I mean, granted that my grandparents were paying a decently hefty fee to live there, and also granted that my grandparents were, and my grandma still is, really extremely fabulous, but I couldn't figure out why no one was being even slightly weird to me, questioning even the smallest bit why this big tenor dude was the granddaughter. I thought maybe they watch a lot of Oprah in Baltimore. (laughs) I stayed for four more days, arranging furniture and washing plates and running to the store, taking photographs of things that my grandmother insisted had been damaged by the movers, unwrapping the same tiny sentimental items that I hadn't been allowed to touch as a child. I had the car washed. I bought new hanging plants. Coming and going from Roland Park multiple times a day, and whenever I saw Susan or Becky or any of the rest of them, they would greet me warmly and ask how Rita and Stanley were doing. Fine. I'd say they're they're doing just fine. It was almost the last day. Grandpa hadn't been feeling well at all and was downstairs in the care wing. I was sitting on a chair outside his room for a few minutes, and I realized that no one, why, no one there gave even a very small crap about my gender or any presumptions it might have created about my sexuality. There was only one gender recognized by the staff there dutiful grandchild, I could have been as outwardly peculiar as anything, and it wouldn't have mattered. I was the only employee, non-employee under 50 in the entire hallway. 